Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So today a really fun and uh, beneficial tutorial in Excel uh, about how to create uh, sensitivity analysis for your financial models and uh, for any model that has input variables and outputs uh, that you get based on those inputs. Sensitivity analysis helps us understand the, the uncertainties, the limitations and the scope uh, of our decision model. It shows us the impact that the independent variables have on the dependent variable upon changes being introduced into them. It's a great auditing tool for uh, financial models. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look in Excel. Okay, so uh, here we have uh, a model for, um, for our uh, share price calculation. So what we've done is we've used uh, three years of historical data. We've done a rough forecast for the next five years, calculated our terminal value, our enterprise value, uh, brought it down to equity value, and then calculated our per share price based on the, the outstanding shares. Uh, this is uh, not the subject of this video, how to do that, but imagine that you have a model or whatever it is, it can be just like multiplying a few, a few numbers and you have some inputs and our most important inputs are up here and I've highlighted two of those. So our revenue growth and our EBITDA exit, exit multiple are our most important assumptions for this model and we want to see how changing those will affect our per share uh, price. What we can do is we can start uh, changing those here and uh, this would change the share price but now we're not able to look back. So what we usually do is we're going to create a, a sensitivity table and uh, the way we're going to set that up is just going to come down here and go like share price sensitivity calculation. Okay, let's make it nice. Cover this with our dark blue, make that white and bold it. And uh, then gonna uh, leave one row here and one column here. Just gonna come here and uh, link the the output that we're gonna be changing. But actually, just gonna to give you a bit more context, just gonna uh, put some borders here. So what we wanna do here is we're gonna see what will happen if our EBITDA multiple changes, and uh, up here. We want to see what happens if our revenue growth percentage changes. What we do is we usually set up the table so that in the middle, you notice that we have four, uh, five uh, columns and five rows. In the middle, we want to get the same result as here. So here we're going to put our EBITDA multiple of eight. And uh, here we're going to put our revenue growth of 15, 15%. Out home align center. Okay, so what we want to do here is we uh, want to see how uh, changing this with uh, some step is going to affect uh, things and uh, let me just format that, I want to make it custom and I want to use this one, just want to add my X here, okay much, much better. I want to keep the same formatting as up here. So for my EBITDA multiple, I expect that it might go between uh, 8, 7, 6, and uh, it also might rise to 9 or 10. Just copy the formatting here. Okay. And for my revenue growth, I would expect it that the worst case scenario is going to be zero. And uh, then maybe somewhere in the middle, 8%. I do it at 23% and at 30%. Okay, just copy that to the side, uh, the formatting. And uh, here, I'm gonna color it a bit. I want it to be a bit darker. This is where I want to get the same as, uh, as here, as, as, as what our model calculated, because it's using the same assumptions that we use in our model. And uh, just gonna color it in a bit of a heat map. So I'm gonna actually do those, a light blue and the middle one a bit darker to make it more visible. And uh, here at the top left corner, the way the table works is that here you would link the output. The idea is that uh, by using some of Excel's functionality, we're gonna take our 
our output here and we're gonna change our inputs, our independent inputs, so our revenue growth and our exit uh, multiple for EBITDA, we're gonna change them with those values for revenue growth and those values for EBITDA multiple and calculate in each of, those cell, of these cells how much would our share price change, how much it would be for each combination of revenue growth and uh, EBITDA multiple. Doing this allows us to have a much better picture of how changes in, in our most important assumptions would influence our model without having to break our model that uh, we have prepared with our uh, like normal assumptions for, uh, for our optimal assumptions. The way to do that is just select the whole table, having this here is paramount and then go to data what if analysis data table. The first thing we want to do is row input cell and uh, this is not EBITDA multiple, although it seems that way, it's the row here. So on the row, we have the revenue growth and on the column, we have the EBITDA multiple. And uh, here we have to select the cell that we have to change. So for our revenue growth, we have to change this cell here because it's linked throughout the whole model and it's gonna if we change this cell here, it's gonna influence the whole model and get a different calculation. And for our column input cell, we have EBITDA multiple also here. And if we work correctly, we should get the same here in the middle as our share price uh, calculation. And you see we have 6.26, so let's just format those a bit better. And uh, maybe out home AC to align them to the center, no? Okay, gotta be number and then we can move them to the center. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, having this table, we can then perform a much more thorough analysis uh, than rather than just having the model and uh, changing the, the assumptions uh, to see different results. And uh, that way we can support a much better decision-making process. And uh, it's really instrumental to analyze how the share price of the potential investment will be affected by possible changes in uh, revenue growth percentage and uh, exit EBITDA multiple. And uh, being able to provide ranges for, uh, for the independent variables within which we can expect a positive return uh, will ultimately aid us in making a more informed decision. Okay, so uh, sensitivity analysis is an instrumental tool uh, in, in our arsenal as a financial analyst. It provides uh, uh, insights, invaluable insights um, into the problems of our models. And it also shows us uh, basically how sensitive is our model to variations in the input variables um, leading to the, to the output uh, data. So uh, I really hope uh, you enjoyed this video. I hope it was beneficial. Uh, I gotta say that uh, as soon as I started implementing sensitivity analysis in my models, uh, it's been really helpful to be able to, to figure out where I have problems or if uh, my model is not structured well. So maybe um, a variable is uh, too, uh, too impactful on, on the model. So maybe small changes in an input assumption uh, result in, in huge uh, deviations in the final uh, outputs. And uh, this is something that you have to address and correct uh, in a timely manner because otherwise you might end up with, uh, with a model that's, uh, that's not really helpful and uh, won't, uh, won't aid your decision process uh, to the full potential uh, that you would like it to. Okay, that was it for today. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even punch that bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thanks for watching and see you next time. Call uh, of our... Um, um, <clears throat> just to... Okay, so uh, the fun doesn't... And uh, it's also um, <clears throat> um, 